Even leave a five star review wherever you get your podcast. I'm Anthony Totri. Yeah, you are. He's Sean DePaz, Shane yeah, Bach. We'll probably be in the chat at some point, but he's still in Indianapolis covering yeah, he is. the NFL Combine, guys. It is time for a walk of shame because mm. Arizona State got their ass kicked. That they did. They lost 79 to 61 to the number four team in the nation, the UCLA Bruins. Um, a lot to get into tonight. Obviously, it was interesting when you look at the numbers between these two teams. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the fact that Jaime Jaquez is him. Um, yeah. And then we'll get into what this means for both the Pac-12 tournament and the NCAA tournament. Uh, Sean, before we get into all of that, is this the first time that like we've let the, the drums play on the, the lost music? Because like, it felt like it sounded different tonight, it felt like. I don't know. I honestly didn't even hear Can it. Can you play it again? Are you able... It sounded different. I I hate like the song because it means we lost. But I don't remember like the the like the little drums in there. Yeah, that was Do it again. Mm. See, but this there's is, no this is, that's there's different. There's yeah. no drums on this. It's one. sad. Okay. And then the drums come in at some point? Yeah. Let them just just hold it. Okay. Uh. -huh. I know oh. it's a lot, but this okay. is a vibe. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm feeling it. All right. Why are we because usually when it's a it's a walk of shame, we're trying to be uh, sad. Dude, this, I could let I that play I, for the whole I show. I can't really be sad during this. <laughs> <laughs> it is a vibe. Uh. <laughs> that goes kind of crazy. Um, uh. What did you think about the game, though? I mean, it was... <laughs> The game was cool until it wasn't, and yeah. when it wasn't was when Bobby got the tee. I don't know. Yeah. I, like The game was over at that point. It just... I mean... The game wasn't over at that point, but everything was just went downhill from it's that turning point. point though. It was. It was certainly the turning point. I know Shane's probably not a big fan of calling something that happened with like two minutes left in the first half a turning point, but it, it certainly seems like it was. Um, it obviously, because it, it wasn't just the tee that Bobby got. I do think it was kind of a weak tee, personally. Um, a lot of those calls, I want to say, in the first half felt a little weak. Yeah, yeah. They, it was definitely they were the refs were keeping the game tight, but um, I think they were doing it both ways. I, I mean. Mick Cronin's not yelling at the refs like Bobby was. Well, yeah. Um, also, you're not yelling at the refs when you're winning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or the number four team in the country. That's true, too. Um, but the reality is, is that the good teams don't let stuff like that get out of hand and spiral. And ASU did. Um, the next couple of possessions after that were just downright terrible. Um, and you can't do that. They, they let UCLA hit a shot at the buzzer to end the half. And at that point, it's like you can't let you can't let good teams do that when you're shooting the way you were at the beginning of the game, playing defense the way you were at the beginning of the game. It was generally all around good. They were they were the better team for the majority of the first half. Um, but you can't let you can't get, you can't let a good team like that get some kind of momentum yeah. the way that they did. And once they had that momentum, it was it was curtains. Yeah, no, exactly. Momentum, I think, was the the key thing that you saw there probably in the last two three minutes of the first half it went back and forth with offensive fouls then bobby got the tee they shot four free throws um if i'm not mistaken because they had the, the technical free throws and then jaime Hawkins, he shot two free yep. throws as well so they took the lead at that point and then to your to your point they had the i want to say it was a tiger campbell three i could be mistaken on that so. though um but that was at the buzzer and then from that point on coming out of the second half it was that same team, the UCLA team that finished the first half is the UCLA team yeah. that came out in the second half. And then on Arizona State's side, it was a completely different team. It was a team that yeah. you had seen probably the last few weeks before the Utah and Arizona game. I mean, the reality is it's the team you've seen all season. Like, obviously, they, they've had good games, but the reality is, is that they have not been capable of putting together two complete halves for the majority of the season. Um, and I... I I like I, I want to be clear. I'm not being that hard on this team because the reality of what this game was is it was one of the best teams in the country yeah. playing a team that you isn't were, one you of were the supposed best teams. To lose. The you were supposed to lose, and you're supposed to lose by a lot. Um, I think the spread was 11 and a half. Um, so, like it, that is what it is. But and the reality is that this it did look a lot like a lot of the other games that we've seen ASU play, where you know they have momentum and they just kind of give it away. Um, 
they just can't play a complete game and it's frustrating it, it's it's tough to get to get any kind of confidence in this team in wins or losses because mm-hmm. um, there was a stretch where they were winning games and I, it wasn't a whole lot of confidence the games they won after that losing streak they went on um I, weren't, they weren't really encouraging um so uh, this is this is what this team is um but we know what they can be too. yeah they can be great they can they can be they can be the best i think um and that, I think that's what makes it so frustrating. It'd be one thing if we if this just is the was the peak for this team, but we know it's not. And it's not the season. Look, TM, no, the, yeah, TM yeah. in the chat, turnovers, discipline, OMG, they kill me. I mean, you look at the numbers, right? We could pull them up right now. There's some some key things that definitely stick out to me. We'll get into the turnovers and all that, but the final score, obviously, if you're just now hopping in, 79 to 61 in favor of UCLA. The Bruins got it done tonight at home like they have for the past, I want to say this is their 24th straight win at home. They still haven't lost uh, at Poly Pavilion this season. Wait, That's crazy. Damon, how many um, consecutive wins at home do the Arizona Wildcats have? I, I, I couldn't tell you, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. Mm, okay. That's a, That's a big fan. I thing. forgot. I'm, I kind of forgot. Yeah, we were just, just double-checking. Good question. Double-checking. I just want to know. Uh, in terms of the way these two teams shot tonight, super, super interesting numbers. ASU outshot UCLA from the field 42% yeah. to UCLA's 41.9%. And then they also outshot them from behind the arc, 36.8 to UCLA's 26.7. But this is really where things got out of hand. You look at the points off turnovers, 29 for UCLA, 16 for Arizona State. And the, the more interesting thing part about that is that UCLA actually committed more turnovers yes. than Arizona State. I believe it was 16 turnovers for ASU and 19 for UCLA. And then this is the number that sticks out to me. You look at offensive rebounds, just five for Arizona State, which that would have been fine and dandy if you hold UCLA to a similar yeah. number. Instead, they quadrupled it. They had 20 offensive rebounds themselves. Sean, I mean, there's a handful of different ways you could go <laughs> yeah. here, but which one sticks out to um, me? I mean, yeah, it's the it's the offensive rebound numbers. It's... um. It's a problem that this team has had all year, not to this severity, but it, it, they have not been a good offensive rebounding team. Or, or they have they have allowed other teams to get second chances plenty of times. Um, but when you 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 would hope that when you see a team when you're out shooting a top five team in the country and you're having them turn the ball over more, you're hoping that that would be a win. Yeah. Um, it obviously wasn't. Um, and that's that is the exact reason why you cannot let a team this good get that many second chances. It simply you, you will lose that game every single time. This is not this is not this is not any kind of high level basketball analysis. You hear it all the time. <laughs> if you let good teams get second chances, if you let any they're gonna, team, well, I mean, yeah, really, yeah, you let any. Team. It doesn't even take good teams. Yeah, but when you <laughs> yeah. give them more well, than get, one opportunity. Odds are these are collegiate athletes. They're going to. They're not. You can't give them two chances. By the spoiler, bucket, they're going to put the ball yeah. in the basket when they have more than one opportunity. Yeah, that's exactly what UCLA did tonight. Um, and Jaime Hawkins, hats off to him. There's a reason why he's the front runner, <laughs> or tied with Azulis uh, Tubelis for Pac-12 Player of the Year. Uh, from a media perspective, this is a guy that had yep. 19 points in the first half. He finished with 26 points, eight of 18 from the field, seven boards. Uh, this is a guy that I felt like he dunked the ball yeah. eight different times. Yeah. Um, but he, he was just better tonight. He was. And it was interesting because he was not this he wasn't this dominant the first time they played. And the I don't think in the last two seasons against ASU. No, he was yeah, dominant. 100%. And um, it, it's funny you, you mentioned the Pac-12 Player of the Year race. I I think Azulis Tabellas clearly deserves it based on the whole body of work. But uh, the reality is, is people are uh, – that recency bias is a thing. And I think Jaime might be playing a little better basketball as of late. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, but I do think Tabellus deserves it. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's there's a reason he's in the conversation. He's really good at the sport of basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, you can't let him get out free. Like you can't give him free points, um, which they did on a number of occasions, both in the fast breaks, like the dunks you mentioned, and um, with the offensive rebounds. So. Like I said, he's he's he is considered one of the best players in the country for a reason. And if you let him eat like that, you're go- again you're gonna lose that game almost every single time. Yeah, um, it's tough, man. Not much tough. more to say to it, Joe. In the chat, that. hard to play two solid halves when the offense consists of making bad shots. I mean, look, that is true, but they yeah. also made more. Sh- like, yeah, they, they shot better. The they shot yeah. better than UCLA tonight. Like, 
whether that's from the field, whether that's from behind the arc, like you can't ask much more. Yeah. Literally the game is won and lost on on the glass. Yeah. Like that's exactly uh, yeah. where it that's was. That's what lost. I was gonna say. It's it's hard to play two solid halves when it's impossible to gain any kind of momentum because every time you think you get a stop, you don't actually get a stop and they get a, se a second chance bucket. Like that or a third is, chance. There were times or, yeah, where they had two, 100%. three, four chances on one possession, 100%. and they turned it into you don't a win bucket. That game. You don't win that game. Not I against this team. I can say it. <laughs> but like, like you said, not not, not yeah, against most right. teams. Yeah, absolutely true. Uh, guys, I hope for everyone's sake that you didn't decide to bet on this game, <laughs> at least not in favor of Arizona State. I know it would have been tough, right, especially coming off that buzzer beater win to Arizona. But if you did, congratulations if you won. If you lost, unlucky, guess what? You do the same thing tomorrow when you make it back. Mm -hmm. Guys, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code PHNX. New customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code PHNX. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for more details. Sean, you know what they say? What do they say? 99% of all gamblers quit right before they hit big. Mm. Just saying. Just saying. I have heard that. I've heard that. Don't quit now. Don't be that guy. Don't quit now. I live my quit. life by that model. Mama didn't raise no quitter. No. What's that TikTok song that's popular? Mama rings. Mama raised a gangster. You, mama, you raised a gangster. Yeah. Um, I'm not even gonna <laughs> try to come up with any kind of witty transition here. <laughs> the reality is, is that this game sucked, and when you're watching bad sports, sometimes you just want to get high. <laughs> like, right? Like this is. It, it got to a point where this just wasn't really fun. And you know what makes it more fun is not being sober. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna just. I'm gonna just. I'm gonna be real with you. Um, so go get no G's. Like if, if you're gonna get high, at least make it taste good. Like, because sometimes you know, like you, you're smoking flour and it's it's not the most tasty experience. You got OGs. It tastes like candy. Like legitimate it legit candy. Legit tastes like candy. I like I've said it a hundred times. If there was no THC in it, I would eat an entire bag like candy. Especially the ones cream skull ones. Those things are chef's kiss. And now they have their new strawberries and cream happy ratio one to one um, CBD to THC, and that is. Chef's kiss. It's it's all flawless. Their flavors are flawless, um, and it's the it gets you. They have everything, something for everybody. You know, they got the micro dose for for vets like Totri and I. You know, you can take the full size ones, or again, you want the effects of the CBD and the THC. You check out the Happy Balance. Um, so if you want to check out OGs, you can find them at your local dispensary by checking out ogsbrands.com. But as always, you must be 21 or older and enjoy responsibly. OGs, get it in you. Get it in you. Um, let's get to bottle service let's for it. a second here. Uh, it was a tough performance for just about everybody, but yeah. Warren did, I think, overall, he had a good night. 12 points, 5 of 6 from the field. We've talked about how efficient Warren Washington yes. is and how he has been for the majority of the season. Six boards. I wish he could have doubled that up and maybe had 12. Maybe UCLA gets fewer opportunities than they did. What do you see from the big man tonight? Um, well, I'm not going to say that I saw four turnovers, <laughs> even though we did, which is a, a part of a three-way tie for the team lead, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but no, yeah, it, it was efficiency, and I think you saw, you, uh, it, you think back to a couple games ago where um, Shane spoke to him after a game, and he talked about how he, he knows he can make shots, he just needed the confidence, and I think you're starting to see, uh, specifically since that game, him gaining a little more and more confidence, and there's still definitely room to grow. There's, there's points in the game, I can think early in the first half, where there seemed like he could have made a move to the basket near the baseline. He he hesitated a little bit and he backed out of it. And you want to see him be a, mo a little more aggressive. He certainly can do that. But I think, like I said, you're seeing him um, play with a little more confidence. Um, and you're you're seeing what he's capable of. That, that you love seeing a big man be that efficient because um, that's they need to do. They're near the basket. They need to make their buckets. And he was tonight. Um, he was a bucket getter. And again, he led the team in rebounds. Um, which in this situation obviously wasn't enough. It needed to be way more. Um, but he he did enlarge what he needed to do. He played 30 minutes. He played for a lot of this game, and he, he was very solid. Yeah. Um, so I, I think, he, yeah, like he was a clear choice for bottle service. In terms of everybody else, DJ had 13 points. Dez, kind of a disappointing night, 10 points. Uh, Frankie, 9 points, which is more than we're accustomed to seeing from him. He didn't shoot the ball. Too terribly. He shot yeah. 40% from the It field. does seem like we're at a point now where if Frankie's scoring, they're losing. <laughs> Which I is feel like, like it's always been that way, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's true. But, I, I mean, for, I feel like the first part of the season, I think everyone was just trying to kind of figure out what the team was. I think it's pretty clear now. Like, Frankie is – the, the team is much better when Frankie is a facility. Well, I don't oh, – that's, that's the thing. I don't think it's because Frankie scoring the team is – 
like losing. I think it is more so. He's taking away from his ability f- to facilitate. That's what well, I think he's taking shots at that point. Like he has 10 shots. He had shot the second most of anybody mm-hmm. in the, on the floor tonight for ASU. I think it's more the team is already down and needs a bucket. And Frankie is deciding to go take that shot. Yeah. Right. That's why I think the numbers are a little skewed. And it's like, oh, when Frankie's scoring, they're losing. Well, no, it's usually when Frankie's scoring, the rest of the team is shooting pretty poorly. And he just is trying to go get a bucket. And sometimes he does. Sometimes he doesn't. Regardless, the team yeah. loses. And I mean, the reality of his game is he's he's not a great three-point shooter. And by virtue but the, na- the nature of his game makes it so the shots he's taking are almost always tough shots. He's trying yeah. to make, he's trying to finish strong at the basket. Um, which I think he's capable of, like, he he does it sometimes, right? Like, he, he makes those shots sometimes, but generally speaking, they're tough shots to make. Um, and, but yeah, like I said, I think a big part of it, uh, in addition to what you said, is it, when if he's trying to score, he is not trying to facilitate. It's, it's he tough. can't do two things at once. Um, and, and I think we know, obviously, at this point, that this team is best when the offense is running through Dez. Um, and you've seen a number of occasions where they play really good games, and Frankie's not a part um, of the scoring. He's, yeah. But he's a big part of the offense. Um, so I, I don't think that's any indictment on Frankie. I just think it's the nature of this team. He is it, it is it works better when he plays that role. Um, so I, and again, he's a young man. This is his first year playing, getting real playing time. Um, so. I think you'll see more, more and more growth. As you've already seen this season, you have seen growth, and I think you'll see more. Joe in the chat, we're headed to the sixth seed unless Saturday is a win. Well, let's <laughs> let's talk game. about that a little bit. Let's pull up the fight for the four graphic um, and see what we've got cooking because Washington State has now played themselves into contention as well. So we've got the loss where, factored where, in dog. for Arizona State. They're 20-10, and 11-8 and eight in conference. Obviously, they've got one game left at USC on Saturday, a 9 p.m. tip. That is going to be a big game in terms of Pac-12 tournament seeding. You look at Oregon, they're at 16 and 13 overall, 10 and 8 in conference. They are playing Cal right now. Do we have a score update? Um Cal, it, uh, Oregon's winning 16-12. Um Washington, Washington State is also live. Washington State's currently winning 30 to 21. Washington, come on, coach Hop, please help us. So yeah, you look at Washington State, they're 15 and 15 overall, 10 and 9 in conference. We mentioned the live score against Washington. Is this their final game of the season, or do they have one this more? This is this, I believe, is Washington State's final game of the season. So if yes, this is final game of the season. So if they win this game, they move to eleven and nine in conference play. Which I how do the tiebreakers work? So it's incredibly complicated for no reason. Well, for a reason, but essentially, it's I know obviously head to head. It's by record, um, but then it moves to. Record against common opponents, but um, in terms of highest winning. But in percentage. terms of hi- in terms of highest, so yeah, it start. It would start with Arizona. All four of these teams have beaten Arizona That's once, crazy. which is wild. <laughs> um, and then it moves That's tough, David. down That's tough. to UCLA, which none of these teams have beaten. <laughs> Um, so then it would move down to the USC. USC. So you need, who you need to win. You need to win because Wazoo has beaten USC and Oregon has beaten USC, I believe. Um, so it. It's gonna it, 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 this the, what happens is gonna come down to the very last game, which is Arizona State, U, USC Saturday night nine p.m. tip. Like you got, that's a win. You gotta win. Yeah, you gotta win pretty much. Let's pull up the graphic because there is Utah up there as well. Um, they right now are in a little bit of a tougher spot. They're seventeen and thirteen overall. They're ten and nine. Their final game of the season the is at. Colorado uh, don't put that game past Colorado on the road to finish up their season I know they haven't had the best year but they would definitely like to build some momentum going into the Pac-12 tournament so honestly there is a lot still to unravel for yeah. the Pac-12 I know Oregon and Cal that game's going on right now I wouldn't put Stanford I wouldn't rule them out we've seen how well they can play against some top tier talent just ask Arizona yeah um, and um, Rezo makes a good point in the chat that with the way the tiebreakers work if um, if Utah wins, Washington State can't pass them. So by virtue, they can't pass ASU. That's, um, that's, it, it is it's complicated. Just, just win, just, just win on Saturday. It, it is, none of this matters. And that's what I'm saying. It's a control your own destiny situation. You you beat USC on Saturday. Win and you have a bye, in. pretty much, yeah. right? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's yeah. I think if they win, they they get in. Just just do it. Just do it, guys. It's. I mean, it's hard because USC's they're they're still fighting for their bubble spot too, right? Yeah. yeah. So, but they do have the three seed locked up. 
So. Are they currently losing to Arizona? Uh, yeah, it's currently uh, 24 18, and Boogie Ellis has 11 of those 18. Oh, points. he is really good at basketball, he, he, and he's he's like the kind of player he's your that guy. can take over a tournament. Um, so He's your guy. Go stop him. God, just letting you know now. Please yeah. go stop Boogie Ellis on Saturday oh, night. That's, that's, that's Frankie, most likely. You'd have to assume. Look. Regardless, it's going to be a late tip Saturday. We've already talked about the 9 p.m. tip. So why don't you guys go ahead and stop at Circle K, grab mm. yourself some munchies or just any snacks. A coffee. Really, really a, a coffee, coffee an energy drink. Dude, can I go ahead, go real off. quick? Their coffee machines are dope. <laughs> they like they, So I, I've never seen coffee machines like it. I guess I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm not a... I've been, I haven't been to a lot of gas stations, but I, I can just speak for Circle K. It's got like three little pots of beans on it. And so it like will grind like you literally has a touch screen. You press a button and it'll choose that coffee. So it's basically fresh ground and it just you choose what size cup you have and it just fills it up. And it lets you it asks if you want to leave room for cream or not. Ooh, it's just fancy. It's fancy. Oh, it's you fancy, fancy huh? I'm I I'm not fancy. Circle K. Circle fancy. K do be fancy. Well, guys. I guess I by virtue of fancy, you know, pinky up when I drink my Circle K coffee. We are excited to partner with our friends at Circle K and to kick things off. We've teamed up. For an amazing giveaway opportunity, guys, get your phones out right now. Okay, text PHNX to 31310. Again, text PHNX to 31310 for an opportunity to win a $500 gas card. Okay, I'm going to say it one time more. Text PHNX to 31310 for an opportunity to win a $500 gas card. Guys, if you have more questions, see show notes for details. And all I'll say is Jalen Conyers entered live on our show. Actually. He did. He did. So you have an opportunity to beat Jalen Conyers in a competition. Think of it like that. You got nothing to lose. Um, you also have nothing to lose by going to Burrito Express uh, because it's the, oh that would have made tonight better. Oh, it can make it can make a funeral better. Oh okay. sorry, <laughs> it could. It could. Um, it can make a funeral better if you're not if you're like going to the funeral as like a friend of a friend. I no. I want. I have made a few things clear. I want to be in good clothes. I want there to be good music <laughs> at my funeral. And I've added Burrito Express to the list. Bury me with a burrito. Um, damn, that's a bar. That's a bury bar. Bury me with a burrito. Bury it's me not, with though. a burrito. Yes, it is. How is it a bar? Because it's a Burrito Express burrito. You, yeah, that's fair. That's a bar. That's a flex. Bury me with a burrito. Not everybody's got it like that. I got it like that. Bury me with a burrito. You know who raps that? You know who exactly that, that's a verse from? Who? From the ASU basketball coach on the bench who had the heart mm. haircut. Yeah, like he's Drake. Like he's Drake. I respect it. You know he got clowned by the team, so I respect the respect the move. Um, but you, and I would also respect the move to Burrito Express. Um, and if you hadn't heard, Burrito Express now has two new NIL athletes. How ASU many? Dose. One, <laughs> two. Count them. I think that's French for one, two. Okay. Um, I thought you just forgot. That's what I picked up from my extensive listening of Hamilton. I don't know if that's even close to right. Um, but I do know it's right that <laughs> Bruno Express has two new NAL athletes. ASU football player Elijah Badger and softball star Jazz Hill will receive support in cash, clothes, and, of course, burritos. If only I could be so lucky. Oh, wait, I am so lucky. They bring us burritos all the time. <laughs> um, so get like us and get Burrito Express. Let's let's see. So they're talking in the chat, Joe, talking about Oregon only having to play UCLA once. Um, and they did win that game, mm -hmm. I believe, right? I think so. so. Yeah, they did. Wait, wait, in reality, what you really, really need is you need ASU to win on Saturday and you need Oregon to either drop the game to Cal or drop the game to Stanford. Okay. That's your scenario now. For the number four Dude, seed, Cal could absolutely wreck this conference in the course of two games. That is, but that is, tonight and that, and Saturday. that is your course to the number four seed. Is you got to win Saturday, and you need an L in either both games for Oregon, mm. or you need an L in in a dub. Yeah, right. I said that correctly. Can we? I just want to romanticize again for a second about the about the, about the pack being so aggressively pack that Cal just why you say it like rose. That? It's my, we've been here before. It's like the kale. Sa it's like the sale thing. Kale. It's my accent. You I don't say know it like the fucking veggie. It's kale. No, guys, it's not. Guys it's from cow. The Northeast. We've had this conversation. <laughs> we literally had this conversation earlier this week, and Shane said 
We've had this conversation before when we had this conversation. I'm not yeah, doing it again. Did sound yes, and it's sale. the same vowel. <laughs> it's the same vowel. It's the same sound. We're not doing this again. Um, I just, it would be so beautiful, so poetic if the pack goes so aggressively pack that California um, <laughs> just throws the conference Why into chaos. Why is it chaos. in California? So, fuck off. <laughs> fuck off. Move on. <laughs> Tell me I'm the fucking wrong. Cal Bears, baby. <laughs> it's slipping away from Cal a little bit here. Oh, yeah? Oh, 25-17 no. now. Oh, uh, boy. Hey. Let's come on, Golden Bears. <laughs> Let's get an aftertaste. Sean, what was spit in your tonsil holster? <laughs> oh, that's an all-timer. Um, like a kale smoothie. Um, K-A-L-E, not um, a person. Yeah, but at least Cal that's healthy, a... right? That's good for you. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's a kale smoothie, but in an alternate dimension where I'm allergic to kale. Um, so no part of it was an enjoyable experience, I, I, except for the part where the very beginning where someone offered me a smoothie. And I'm like, oh, hell yeah. I love smoothies. Um, and it's green. You're like, ah, I might be good. And then you realize it's a kale smoothie and now you're dying. Um, oh, shit. You've I, got an allergic reaction that'll kill you? Yeah. Alternate dimension, man. Anything's possible. Mm. I'm sure there's somebody out there that's definitely allergic to Kale, look, you've like you made me think about how I have to say this now. You made yourself think about. No, it. it's not, dude. I was so good up until five minutes ago. Listen, I can't help how I speak. You're the one that made it an issue. Um, so it, it is what it is. Joe in the chat. Hey, oh, I he's making a good point. It's a bar. He asked Saturday when we were raising our banner, did he forget that his squad stormed the field against a three-win football team? That's a good point. That's a good point. Do you have Damon, any comment? Do you have any? Um, I think taking your anger out on me tonight is crazy. Uh, I, I understand it was a tough. Oh, well, loss, I mean, guys, I, we didn't but... bring this up. We didn't bring this up. Yeah, no, Joe. We, it would be it would be unfair if we brought the comment up and then didn't give you an opportunity to respond. Yeah, I I I, I wasn't. I didn't rush the field personally. Okay. I was at the game, sitting close to the field, did not rush it. Okay, you're so a good man. I think that. But you're that better al- than most. That alone gives me some some flack there. But I was I was uh, I I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to respond to it. Yeah, it's a it's a little loser behavior to do that for <laughs> yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, this tasted like mm, this tasted like watching cocaine bear. Mm. Um, which is if you've seen the movie. That was that experience actually tasted good though, because I was eating mozzarella sticks. And you had OGs. And popcorn. And I had OGs. <laughs> um it just was bad. It was bad for me. Literally Outside of the first seven, eight minutes of this game, mm-hmm. I did not want to watch it. It hurt me because you know this team was fighting tooth and nail. They knew what was on it's the like line. It's like when you eat pizza. It's like when I eat pizza. It's enjoyable. It's so enjoyable, and, <laughs> and then, then it not. ruins the rest of the week, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, yeah, that, that's actually a good one. Yeah. It's, it's like eating pizza if you're lactose intolerant. The very beginning is a joyful experience. The butt end of it, Quite literally, not great. That is a much simpler way to say exactly what I said. Yeah, which involved altered dimensions and a and a deathly cow. Yeah. You said you said <laughs> <laughs> it's same concept, but mine is far more ridiculous. Oh, Joe in the chat. This tasted like Shaq's ass, Kobe. What does that even? What the fuck does Did that Kobe mean? Kobe ever Bryant? say that? I. I <laughs> I don't know, and I don't know if I want to know. The fuck does that mean, Kobe Bryant? Li- literally. Look, I'll tell you what it didn't taste like. It mm. didn't taste like Four Peaks, because Four Peaks that's true, that's true. hits that really good. and smacks every single time you're cracking a can. Four Peaks hits um, the way UCLA hit us around tonight. <laughs> 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 oh, a- oh, our friends at Four Peaks are going to be out at the M3F Festival March 3rd and 4th. Guys, grab your tickets at M3FFest.com and enjoy a wow wheat beer while you're there. Maybe talk with some ASU fans out there about how ASU can survive. Okay? Mm-hmm. Again, March 3rd and 4th. So we're talking tomorrow, Friday, and Saturday the 4th. You do got to be 21 years or older to enjoy responsibly. For any Maggie Rogers fans, she's one of the headliners. I know Leah's a big fan. Just saying. Um, you know where you can get Four Peaks, though? Octane Raceway. Octane Raceway and Mavericks. On tap, bro. And, and it's not just the, the, obviously the beer selection that's obviously on point. Um, but they got so much to do. They've got great food. They've got go-karting, virtual reality. You literally can't go there and not like be happy. It's kind of like Disney World. where it's like it, it's. Have you ever been upset at Disney World? 
mm. or Disneyland? No. Have you ever been upset at Octane? No. Exactly. It's kind of like Batman. Have you ever seen me and Batman in the same place? No, you haven't. They might be the same. Um, Octane rocks. Uh, like I said, kart racing, virtual reality, laser tag, axe throwing, bowling, arcade, great food, and drinks. Uh, they got it all. And now you know it's spring training season. Have, have you been to one yet? A game? Yeah. No. No, you're not a big baseball person. I'm trying to go to one. Though. I'll go. Damien, you trying to go to spring training game? 100%. That's right. crazy. Well, you I'm know there. what's dope is that after we go to the spring training game, if we bring our... What? That's great. Now just continue on. That I didn't ask you? No, go ahead. Go I ahead. asked you. No, I brought, yeah, you I brought it up you to you. No, you, did. you brought it up. Go ahead. Just you said, finish, I, finish your conversation. I brought it up and you said you wanted finish, to go. I, that was finish, that, I, I didn't say I said I wanted to go. Yeah. Tojo, you're not invited. <laughs> I was, I was inviting you to our thing. Well, okay. Well, you're invited, Toe Tree. Joe, you're coming too. Yeah, you're invited too, Joe. Um, <laughs> and it's awesome because you take your ticket stuff to Octane after and you get a free $10 game card. So check out OctaneRaceway.com and Mavericks.com to learn more. I, if I remember correctly, Octane's only like five minutes away from Salt River Fields. So you go to a D-backs game or, or a Rockies game at Salt River Field, take that ticket, head over to Octane, get some free arcade play. Oh, what is damn. that? Oh, he thought God. the building. <laughs> so this happens every time. <laughs> Holy! The, the cleaning people come in and they push their cart in, and it kind of shakes the building, and it feels like maybe the building's collapsing. I thought the world's craziest <laughs> storm was happening. Like it, 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 it does happen sometimes where like something happens that's super benign, <laughs> and there's like a split second where I'm like, oh no, this, We're all we, dying. this is the end times. <laughs> like, I, I'm like. Like, uh, uh, it's uh, the rapture. No, no it's, it's just literally. the cleaning people. Yeah. This, this, <laughs> you're in a skyscraper and it starts shaking. It, you get a little worried. It'd probably be great for views. It, mm. Well, maybe on the I mean, dark they, web, the show would go out. So, yeah, not great. Um, know, maybe the last few seconds would be electric. Let's take a look at the Bobby board before we get into our final thoughts. Bobby board. Of this game. No um, kind of bummed we didn't get a Bobby face on UCLA mm. for any point of the season. Especially in a game he gets teed up. Yeah. You know it's got to be good Bobby right? pictures. Now, look, we got one more opportunity for four in a row with UC or USC on Saturday. Um, again, it's a question that Shane asks pretty much at the start of every postgame show or every time we get to Bobby Board. If I would have shown you this at the start of the season, what would your thoughts have been? Um. Uh, first, like if I'm looking at it left to right, like I'm reading a book, dope, dope. How the fuck did we lose to Texas Southern? <laughs> dope, dope. And then how did the fuck did we beat Michigan? And then dope, 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 dope. And then Creighton, fuck yeah. Um. And then San Francisco hurt a little bit, but you don't know the score. But you don't know the score. Um. And then lost to Arizona. I mean, I would have been surprised that we had this many wins. I would um, want more Pac-12. I want more sweeps. Yes, to be honest, I with would you, man. have taken a loss to. And like I would, I would have traded a loss to SMU for a win over any of the teams we lost to in pa in conference play. Oh yeah, I would have traded. If you tell me we lose to SMU but we sweep Oregon, I'm here for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean that would. Well, because I mean the reality is, is you you if this team has one more conference win. If they win one of those games, if they really it's the it, the, the three that are really tough for me is the the, the Washington Washington State. And Colorado games. Those are three teams that I think I, I, I am confident in saying that ASU is better than. Um, I mean, re like we've said, ASU playing at the best, they're better than anybody, I think. But regardless. I mean, look at you turn on the first four minutes of this game. Yeah, they were playing better than UCLA. They're dominating. Um, it was the, 12 to like two. Yeah, yeah, those those three games in particular, though, those hurt because, like I said, you have one more win and you're you're comfortable. You're in. You have a first round. Yeah, bye. now you're um, still you're right on the bubble. And now you're having to play a team that's better than you so you have to having to beat a team that's better than you to have a chance really um so still very much alive like i think they can beat usc um yeah joe also making a good point is that I, i'd trade anything to get that texas southern one to go away that one does hurt i would trade the michigan or creighton win for that for sure especially that michigan one. that michigan one's fucking worthless now <sighs> yeah michigan lost today in double overtime bombs very true um, look, let's talk NCAA tournament for a second and what it's going to take at this point to get in. Because as it stood before this game, oh, Arizona well. State was about the last team in. Yeah. Okay, They were in Joe Lenardi's last four in. Yeah. Um, now, I imagine with the loss, look, you could afford losing to UCLA. You couldn't afford to lose to UCLA by 18 points tonight. Uh, yeah. I think that moves Arizona State to probably the last four out. Um, right. From my perspective. First four out. First four out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, You've got to beat USC on Saturday. 
and you got to win at least one game in the Pac-12 tournament. I think you win on Saturday and you win one game in the Pac-12 tournament. I think that gets you. Honestly, I think if you win on Saturday, they're probably good regardless because yeah, at that point yeah. they'll at that point they'll have a first round bye. They'll beat a team that is on the bubble. Um so realistically, I think they'd probably swap their spots. Um What if you lose though? If you lose, then you have to win uh you the have Pac-12. to win a game in the Pac-12 tournament. Uh you got to win probably two. have to win two. Probably have to. Well, at that yeah, you'd have to win two because at that point you would not have You're a first round by. You're playing teams too. Well, yeah, but at that point you wouldn't have a first round by. Yeah. So you have to beat uh, either Cal or Stanford or Oregon State. I forget exactly where they are in the standings or where ASU would be, but um, you'd have to beat a bad team. So that would only get you so far. And then yeah, you would have to beat a ranked team. You'd have to probably play a, a UCLA or Arizona at that point. Yeah, um, I think. Look, I think for me. This is what I think a perfect scenario looks like, and I might sound crazy, okay? I think a perfect scenario is Oregon wins both their games. Arizona State wins on Saturday, falls to the five seed. Okay. In that scenario, they don't get the first round bye. They get an extra game in the Pac-12 tournament just for another win, right? Without losing that game, you win that game, and either you win the second game or you play whoever is in that spot. Tough as hell. Yeah, and the reality is at that point, you you would have had put two wins back exactly back, three and four one of which coming over arizona you have won four of your last five yeah like you have momentum at that point because i i, this I team, think this that's game a perfect was, scenario I, I i feel you i would honestly still probably have rather have the first round by and lose and and beat whoever they play um but regardless i think it ultimately would accomplish the same thing um so yeah yeah it would be that would be a I'd take that situation for sure. Any <laughs> final thoughts on what we saw? Like I said earlier, it was a it was a really good team. Hats off to Jaime Hawkins and a team that was not that good. Yeah, or that didn't. That, I don't want to say a team that wasn't that good, but a team that just didn't play their best brand of basketball for yeah. two halves. And I, yeah, I, we say it a lot. You know, they're are they bad or are they just not? Like, I don't think they're they're not bad. They're not bad. But I mean, reality is, is we can't keep saying they're better than like. Part of being good is, is winning and, and being good all the time. And yeah, that I mean, is look, UCLA they've won two is. of their last three. Two yeah. of those wins are against top five, top six teams in the conference. Yeah, no, 100%. I'm just saying what part of being good is, is no, staying you're right. good. You're right. You're um, right. UCLA is a, is, a, is a team that is better than ASU. And that's what we saw tonight. A team that's a lot better than ASU. And I don't think anybody was confused going into the game. No, no I don't think so. But, I, I mean, the reality is, is it was a little... As our thumbnail said, a little bit of a burst bubble coming off of the Arizona win. Like obviously, energy's high, and if you manage to string this win back to back, like it's the it's the biggest back to set of back to back wins I think in the country this year. Um, beating two top ten teams on the road, what that what that would mean for this team would have been massive. So um, was like I said, definitely a little bit of a burst bubble. But reality is, is this is what was supposed to happen. Yeah. Um, got USC on Saturday. That's a team that you're capable of beating. You can beat them. Um, so go out and do it. Joe in the chat, it's always great when your season comes down to a 9 p.m. start on a Last Saturday. Last game in hey, the world. It's true, though, but guess what? Right after that 9 p.m. tip, whatever happens, we're going to be live right, right here, here to talk about it. We're Shane gonna, will be back. Shane will be back. We will literally have an updated look as to what the Pac-12 tournament will look like at the end of that game. So definitely Stay locked in. Stay tuned for that because it's going to be a good show, an informative show, regardless of what happens. Mm-hmm. And then next week, the boys are going to be in Vegas for Tuesday the Pac-12 tournament. Tuesday or Wednesday, not sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just be there. Stay locked in. It's going to be a lot of fun. You've been on the ride this long. Might as well buckle up because it's just getting fucking Listen, started. and the reality is, as I know no one wants to hear this, there's going to be NIT post games, even if they don't get to the tournament. Stop it. I'm just saying. Stop it. It's That's probably Stop where they're it. at. I'm, you're telling me we're not going to do post-game shows? Yeah, we will. Yeah. I don't want to. It would be. Listen. Guys. We could trick ourselves into be, having fun with an NIT championship. Be like we JJ. Be like JJ. We can beat USC. Yes, and we, we will. Fuck the USC. NIT. We don't need the NIT. If you enjoyed the content, give us a follow at PHNX underscore sign You can follow me at Anthony underscore Totri. You can follow the man in the Hoosier state at Shane Deef. You can follow Sean to pause at Sean underscore to pause. Uh, you got one for me? Yeah, mispronouncing kale yeah, as no, always. No. With a Have a good night, guys. Allergy See you Saturday. In a, in a parallel Peace. universe as always. Peace.